Hello and welcome everyone to a new blog post of TableauFence.com. Today we are going to talk about a Tableau wafer extension. My name is Timo Tautner and I'm with Tableau since 2014. And this extension solves a highly specific problem, but you can easily adjust that to way other needs you might have. So watch out for that one. So first off, about what kind of wafers are we talking about? Well, we're talking about electronic wafer from the semiconductor industry. So actually each and every single mark we will see does represent a computer chip and a certain value attached to it. So for that, let me share you my screen with a dashboard which shows on the one hand side a couple of different wafers and if I filter them then I get just a subselection of that underneath and then if I select a couple of different values over here over here then something magically happens in my extension on the right hand side and uh, well, from there, I can drill down into a deeper analysis. That, that's it from a very high level perspective. But before I actually explain you what, what really happens, let me share you how the process looked like in the past. So you can abstract that use case from a wafer to, well, something gets produced. So let's assume you would be a business user somewhere close to a manufacturing industry, right? It could be, uh, I don't know, like vehicles, it could be like a motor, it could be uh, um, like chips or anything else, right? Anything else which produces data. And in the past, a business user from the company who was interested in a solution like that would need it to go to IT if they would like to analyze a certain subset of data from their production environment. So let's say that business user was having an Excel list, which probably sounds very familiar to you, and say, well, these are the different wafers or pieces which I want to analyze. Could you please give me like graphical representation of that particular data? So what the IT guy then need to do in the past is sending a SQL statement to a Hadoop environment and get back the raw data of all the different wafers in this example or whatever gets produced and they would have another list of values. They would then need to feed a custom coded Python script in order to enrich that data, so this is the, the current data, with another set of information, which is interpolated data. So not just the measuring points, which were available uh, already, but also interpolated data, in order to create images, which would then help the business user to do his analysis, his or her analysis. And on top of that, I mean, what if the business user would ask another question based on the images they get back? Well, for this case, it was not even part of the scenario because of course you would loop back to IT and the whole process would start again. So it was a highly manual process and all of that is gone with that single extension. So what IT can now do, they can basically connect this very same dashboard to their Hadoop environment directly. Now, rather than looking at one single filter, you could think of many different filters a business user could do. I just wanted to make it really easy here. And then the business user could set all the different filters they are interested in and filter it down to the wafers they wanted to see. So therefore, let's say they want to focus on these lower outliers here. And in this particular example, we are looking at thickness, right? So these values you're seeing there is the thickness, the average thickness for all these different wafers. And now let's say that very same business user wants to compare like the thickness for these three different wafers. So I can now select them and you're seeing all the different images for these three different 
wafers. And we could also look at something maybe uh, like way different, like this one, which is way darker than the others, which I can see from the pattern itself already. And just to explain it a little better, like all the values you see here are around like 50-ish different, different black values you see there. So these are the measuring points on that wafer. And everything between these black dots is the interpolated data. So what happens in this extension is once I select the data, it gets passed over to two different Python endpoints. So one being the part where this data, the interpolated data, gets written into a Postgres database. So first off, the Python script interpolates the data and then writes it into a database. And secondly, and that's happening in parallel, to be honest. And secondly, it creates these images, right? So what you're seeing here. So now, once I generated all these images, I can also do a drill down and click on them. And once I click on them, I can do a deep dive analysis into that on the lower left. So now I see like the thickness of it in this, in this histogram and say, OK, I want to just focus on, on these uh, outliers here and then seeing where it is on the wafer or on the other side, see, OK, how thick is it here and where does that affect like in, the, in that histogram, right? So, of course, this is the part where you can do whatever you want in the lower part, because that's pure Tableau, as well as the whole upper part. And the extension is everything, like I said, on the right-hand side. Cool. That's it for the demo part. So, let's now move into the more technical part. So, how can you adjust that to your own needs? So like I've been saying at the beginning, it is part of a blog post. So if you search for tableaufence.com and you will find a Tableau Wafer extension framework blog post, which talks about what are the system requirements. And the first thing you might notice is that it needs Tableau Desktop 2020.2. Well, that's just true if you want to leverage that geospatial information on the lower part here, because that's uh, not supported in earlier versions. Nevertheless, when you download the files within the step-by-step -step installation, you will get the following folder structure once you extract it, this one, with all these files in here. And there you will also find a version 2019.3, which is exactly the same, but it does not leverage the relationship feature as well as the geospatial uh, representation on the lower left. So what else? Well, the wafer extension.trx just points to the extension, which is basically the static HTML file. Uh, wait a second, it's within templates and then the index.html. So that's the core of the extension. That's basically the web page, the web component of everything you're seeing in the front end of the extension. And this one contains two parts, the json.io.py and the JavaScript part. So let's start with, so it referenced them. So the json.io.py part, basically has two different endpoints. One being render pictures and the un other one being data processor. So the whole extension runs on a Python Flask web server. And it runs under um, localhost 5000. If you want to put that into like an HTTPS environment, that's what you will need if you make this production ready, then make sure you adjust that within the t uh, wafer extension TRX, right? So currently it's saying HTTP localhost. If it's not localhost, it needs to be HTTPS due to security reasons. And within wherever you run that web server, it will create two different endpoints, like I said, data processor and render pictures. So again, if I just reload this extension. 
and I select certain data points, what will happen is I will take these data points, which is basically this table, which you should know from the Tableau extension tutorial, and it will pass over this very same table with two more information, which you will find in the JavaScript file, to the Python Flask endpoint of, on the one hand side, the image uh, rendering part, which generates these images, on the other part, writing the data back into a database. Both of that is happening after the interpolation is done. So the interpolation of the points, so everything between these uh, black dots, this is happening a little bit higher up within the script in this part. So this is where the interpolation uh, takes place. And of course, you can adjust that to whatever you want and use different um, like um, interpolation methods as well. You could take them from Tableau and feed them directly into the script. That's all up to you. Where does the handover take place? That's where the JavaScript file comes into play. So two different ones are here. One is just doing the filtering. So currently the filtering is happening via a parameter array, which just contains a single value. So once I click on a certain image on the right hand side, this very uh, method will be called, which just takes um, the parameter array and replaces the value to whatever is in the filter array where currently there's just a single value. Of course, you could simply add check marks to all these different wafer images to say, well, I want to check mark those and I want to take multiple uh, wafer IDs and filter the lower part or even jump on a different page. Then just make sure that you're using the apply filter async method instead and loop through the filter array. Last JavaScript part is the Tableau extension, which mainly consists out of, like I said, the tutorial of the Tableau extensions generally, and then it becomes extended with the part you should see on the lower bit here. Let me just find it. Da, 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 da. Uh, select reference to Python. So that's just a, a log output where I can see how the data looks like before I send it over to the two endpoints within Flask. And here are the two AJAX calls. So the first one being sending the JSON to the render pictures endpoint and doing then some front end stuff. And the other part being sending the very same data set, so the whole wafer list, to the URL endpoint data processor. So in my case, localhost 5000. If you also run it on Flask, which uh, comes with the jsonio.py script. And uh, yeah, then this data will be handed over to localhost 5000 slash data processor. And if both of that is a success, you will see it in the front end. For demo purposes, I already select pre-selected the wafers I showed here. But of course, that can take way longer. So let me choose a wafer which I didn't chose before, and then you will see it takes a little bit longer. So now I'm selecting this wafer, and you're seeing the whole process happens in the background. So this is just the uh, Anaconda console, which gives me an output of everything which happens in Python. And then you're seeing once it's ready, the extension will take care of visualizing it. And also the data becomes written into the database. What it's currently not checking is if the database already committed the data completely into the database. So sometimes if you directly click on it, you could see something like this where you're good, everything worked fine, but the data is not completely uh, written into the database yet, right? So what the script is not checking yet, the response of the database, which the Python script 
then sends back to the JavaScript part to say, hey, user, now it's really written into the database. So in this case, just click on this, this particular image, press F5 twice. With this, you bypass the cache and you will requery the database with the very same uh, SQL statement. So with the wafer I selected here, 9895. And you should then see the actual result of that very same uh, wafer if it's uh, written into the database completely. So here we go, we now see the full picture. But the beauty is really, if you already selected these other set of wafers again, and then it will create even more thumbnails, and these thumbnails were there before. So if I click again on a particular wafer, the data is already in the database, so you're all set. Cool, I hope this gives you an idea of the power of this extension. I already have customers which are just interested in showing images uh, and not having the need of generating these images on the fly or writing the data back into the database. So therefore be creative and let me know below the blog post what else come to mind when you're seeing this extension and what questions or challenges you might have. Uh, really, really important to mention is that I didn't create that extension by my own, but with Ludwig Elat and Konstantin Greger, who are both great colleagues of mine and uh, amazing dudes when it comes to databases and Python, whereas, whereas I am more the JavaScript and, and front-end developer. Cool, with that said, looking forward to your feedback and hopefully you enjoyed that recording. Thank you very much.